gosh. You guys are amazing. Good morning, good morning, good morning from beautiful sunny San Diego. Hi, I am Stephanie Lou. No, I'm not Luria. I know, I miss Luria too. But I definitely had to represent for her with her 10 minute warm up. My goodness. My goodness, Luria, how you do that? You are absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, hi everyone. I am Stephanie Lou, and welcome to Go Live Now. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, where the heck is Luria? Well, guess what? Luria is often doing amazing and wonderful things because 2021 is where LSP is going to glow up. So having said that, let's have her day for today. Today, I'm going to be walking you through 10 content frameworks that are really going to help you level up your live stream. We're going to be talking about content, how you could come up with ideas that you can go ahead and use to captivate your audience. So what I want you to do is get your pens, get your notebooks, get all the things in all the things, because we're going to be talking about how you could create content that absolutely captivates your audience. Now, for those of you that don't know me, oh my gosh, you don't know me. Here's the thing. I'm Stephanie Liu and I'm a live video strategist and I'm an ad agency veteran. I've spent the last decade and a half deep in the trenches of agency life. I've been helping brands go from unknown to unforgettable by leveraging live video. But not only that though, my background is also in social media strategy. So listen, 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 listen. If you're wondering, my goodness, it's a new year. How do I create content for all my shows? I'm going to give you all of the content frameworks that I use, not only for lights, camera, live, but also for digital confetti and all of our clients. That way you can use it for your show. So if you're interested in this, let me know that you're interested. Just go ahead and type in interested. Yay. <laughs> Shout out to the Ecamm live crew. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. And for those of you that were asking about the music, you'll have to ask Gloria because honestly I hit her up and I was like, um, do you have music that I can play? And she had literally had like this whole entire folder of music that you can use. And I was like, you are amazing. And so if you're interested in what kind of music they use on the show, check this out. This is what they use. Epidemic sound. This is where you can find all of the amazing and wonderful things, right? So you could find all of this, right? <laughs> and we can really go from there. All right. So having said that, for those of you that are tuning in, we're talking about content frameworks. And if you're not ready for this, some of you are already asking, <laughs> what is digital confetti? Michael, you're so you're already ahead of the game. Digital confetti is about how you can repurpose your live stream and sprinkle it all across the Internet as if it were digital confetti. That way people can find out how amazing you are. Yes, you. And so that's two shows, Lights, Camera Live and Digital Confetti. But today, go live now. We're going to be talking about content frameworks. And so having said that, let's go ahead and get started. Tell me what your show is about. Go ahead and light up the comments and say like, what's the name of your show? Tell me what it's about, because what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about content frameworks. And in order to do that, let me get this set up for you. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. All right. So whenever I'm working with clients and we're talking about launching a live stream show, What's really important, oh, India, you're going to love this too. <laughs> What's really important is having a pre-framed conversation with your clients. Now, if you're not producing live stream events for clients, this is probably something that you want to do for yourself. But what I'm showing you here is called the six steps of contagious content. If you haven't read the book, it's actually by Jonah Berger. It's called contagious, why things go viral, why things catch on. Okay. And when he talks about content and making sure that it's shareable by everyone, what he lays out in his book is called the six steps. And so we'll go through each one of them. Okay. The first one is that when you're creating content, most people, when they share content, it has what's called social currency, right? So let me go ahead and zoom in this for, for you a little bit. Social currency. People care about how they look to others. They want to seem smart. They want to seem like they're in the know as if they're cool. All of those things, right? Think of a case study called Will It Blend? It was this blender company and they said, you know what? How do we get people talking about our amazing blender? And they would blend literally like smartphones, iPads, all of the things in a blender to see if it would actually blend in their blender. So you want things that have social currency. Okay. So write that down. That's the first S in the six steps. You want social currency. 
The next one is to talk about triggers. Top of mind means tip of tongue. And this is why so often you would see people saying like, oh, you know, what's the theme for today? On Mondays, you might see things like Mindset Monday, Marketing Monday, whatever, right? Testimonial Tuesdays, all of those things. Think about for your show, right? Think about for your show, what are some triggers that could be used, okay? So shout out to a couple of you that are already sharing branding like a pro. I like that one, branding like a pro. So think of some social triggers that you could probably use for branding like a pro. For those of you that already have triggers in your content calendar, by all means, feel free to go ahead and share it, okay? All right. <laughs> Paul notices that my daughter's crying in the background. Yes, welcome to the wonderful life of having kids at home all the time, right? Husband is there, so he'll definitely take care of her. The next one is emotion. That's E. Because when we care, we share. And here's the fascinating thing. Is that... Thank you. <laughs> so what I was saying is that going back to the letter E, emotion, what you want to do is you want to create content that sparks emotions, whether it's going to be joy, happiness, curiosity, or even anger in that sense, right? So having said that, think of what are some things that you can share. In fact, write down things that you've already shared. Right? What was something that you found so fascinating? And actually, I'm going to share with you something that totally tripped me out over the holiday break. Like literally, I was in the zone focusing on this thing for the entire week. I was like blinders on. This was like the only thing that I would focus on. Okay. So emotion, that's the letter E in the six steps. Next, let's talk about the next one. First, public. And what that means is built to show, built to grow. The more public something is, the more likely people will imitate it. How many of you actually love the LSP countdown timers? I do, right? The first time I ever saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, stop it. I want that. I want that, right? And then soon after, how many people did we see making their own countdown timers? And that's because Luria and the entire crew has this amazing capability to inspire their audience, right? So built a show built to grow, that's gonna be public. The next one is practical value. And this is generally where it actually might work for your show, right? So if you're teaching someone like tips, tricks, hacks, whatever the thing is, step by step, that's practical value. People are going to share that. In fact, especially this episode when we're talking about content frameworks, this is something that you wanna do. So for those of you that are just tuning in, we're talking about how to pre-frame your clients or even for yourself. When you're looking at your content, run it through these filters, these six filters. Does it give your viewers social currency? By me sharing this, do I look smarter by doing this? T, triggers, does it make you top of mind and tip of tongue? Emotion, right? Is it causing someone to be happy, curious, or are they angry about something, right? Public, built to show, built to grow. Then you have practical value. Are these things, are these things that they could use daily? In fact, if you could set this up where it's a habit, where they know that every time that they're gonna go live, there is an LSP checklist that they have to go through. Now you're a part of that habit. Now you're instilling and you're anchoring that confidence that when someone goes live, they know that they have everything on set, right? Because they have you, they have their checklist, right? Good. All right, and then the very last one is going to be stories. Because here's the thing, let me zoom in this for, for you real quick. Cancel, go over here. We're gonna be in layers. Zoom in for you. So stories. Stories is information that travels under what seems like idle chatter, but really stories is what captivates an audience. So knowing how you launched your show, why you're doing your show, how it's helped other people. This could be stories like testimonials. Keep that in mind. This is gonna be very, very helpful. For those of you that are 
that are wondering where you can find this cool graphic. Again, this is in the book by Jonah Berger and it's called Contagious, Why Things Catch On. And so if you go this, if you look at these six steps, you don't have to have all of them, but just know that when you're developing your content calendar, these are things that you want to have in mind, okay? Now, let's geek out a little bit more. Here's, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna create another layer for you. We're gonna have some fun. The next thing that I generally do with clients, and again, this is where you wanna break out your notes, okay? So the first thing that I usually do with clients is once we understand, okay, we know what contagious content is. We know what kind of stories, triggers, emotions, all of that good stuff is going to motivate audiences to take action. The next thing that you want to do is create what's called content pillars. Let's make this black actually. You guys can see this. <laughs> I love my iPad. I got it over the holidays. Okay, let's change this and we'll do thinking and we'll do this pen this is gonna be fun okay so the next one is going to be content pillars you can see my handwriting <laughs> content pillars and this is usually when I work with my clients and I say if we were to bucketize your content what are three things that you would want to focus on so one two and three in most cases, it will most likely be something like educate, educate, entertain, and then inspire. If I'm building my business and I want to have a content framework, these are three, th three buckets that I want to think about, right? <laughs> Kat says, I love that word, bucketize. Yeah, bucketize your content. So we have these three pillars that we're going to do. And so if this is the, the buckets that we're going to have, what are some themes? Themes is really good if, if what we were talking about earlier were triggers. So top of mind and tip of tongue. So if you're going to do, let's say, educate, right? Maybe if your show is about branding, someone had mentioned branding earlier, you could have hashtag marketing Monday. I'm literally, I'm probably going to end up doing some of my content strategy. <laughs> Okay, so let's say your theme is Marketing Monday. That doesn't necessarily mean that your show has to be called Marketing Monday. It's knowing that when you repurpose your content, remember Digital Confetti, you could use a hashtag such as Marketing Monday, okay? Think about this. So then what are some other themes that you could use throughout that entire time? When you do that, then start coming up with content ideas. This is just a brainstorm. It doesn't have to be finalized. Just going like, oh, hey, you know what? Well, someone always writes a news article on this day. So it could be article. And oh, you know what? Luria is always on a podcast. So let's put like podcast over here under entertain and then inspire. Maybe you might have like testimonials and then that could be testimonials over here. What you want to do is that just lay it all out just lay it all out as far as like what your content pillars are going to be okay so for those of you that are just tuning in go ahead and let me know like what what is resonating with you so far i love the fact that bucketize <laughs> edward yes bucketize i absolutely love bucketize so run with bucketize if that's what you remember then that's what you remember bucketize okay so now you have your content pillars. The next step, this is usually what I do with clients in what we call like the war room, right? It's a room that's pretty much covered with like all these post-it notes of just ideas. In fact, if I were to change the screen over here, you could probably see like this big, huge post-it note over there. My office is covered in post-it notes because I have all these ideas. And the reason why this is so important because that leads us into our next framework our next exercise that you could do for yourself and literally i'm telling you it only takes about like 10 minutes okay so let's go into this i'm going to take a quick peek and see who is <laughs> all right so here's the next one this is my favorite piece that gets the creative ideas going for clients okay or even for you as you're coming up with your show do this exercise. I think you would absolutely love it. Okay. Ready for this? It's called 10 by 10. It's the 10 by 10 ep exercise. And I learned this from Mike Keenigs. And it's, it's as simple as this, is that you're going to write down the top 10, top 10 frequently asked questions 
about your business, your product, or your service, okay? Think about that. These are probably things that you get in your direct messages. These are things that you get in your email. Maybe you even have something on your website where it has like frequently asked questions. Put that in here. Start labeling one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 10, okay? Those are your top 10 frequently asked questions about your business, your product, or your service, okay? Think about that. The next thing that you want to do is the top 10 should ask questions. These are questions that people should be asking, but they don't know because they're not the expert you are. Okay. So for example, let's say if someone is just starting out with live streaming, frequently asked questions that they would ask would be like, what, what kind of lighting should I have? What kind of camera should I use? Uh, what live streaming software, all the things frequently asked questions, but what are some should ask questions should ask questions would be things like, well, how do I make my show searchable all across the internet? How do I repurpose my show? Things that people should be asking themselves is, do you foresee yourself getting your show sponsored? Do you foresee yourself repurposing your show into a podcast, right? These are should ask questions. So you're going to write that down here as well. Your top 10, one, two, three, four, five. And that is your top 10 by 10. I'm going to move that over there for you. Okay. That is your 10 by 10 formula. And the beautiful thing about this is that once you've actually completed this exercise in literally 10 minutes, you have now over 20 ideas of what you can talk about. Think about that. So if you were to do a show every week, you now have 20 ideas that you can talk about for the next 20 weeks. And mind you, when you're doing these frequently asked questions and you should ask questions, people are always going to be asking and leaving commentary in the comments below, right? Even you, all of you right now, they're putting like a question mark, like the, the capital letter Q in the beginning. Those are questions that Luria and the team can use moving forward as a part of their 10 by 10 exercise. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Oh my goodness. Melanie is here. Yay. Yes. So, Here's the other cool thing about this 10 by 10 exercise is that when you do this 10 by 10 exercise, here's what's really interesting. We're going to add another layer in here. When you do this 10 by 10 exercise, make sure that you can see it. Your 10 by 10, remember we talked about bucketize? That's going to be maybe you could group that content now into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Did I, did I just design your course for you? I think so. <laughs> so think about that, right? So now you have this 10 by 10 formula and now you've chunked it down. You've grouped it into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. This gives you a reason that when you are developing your show, you could say, Hey, this is the first show of the new year. We're going to be talking about how you could develop your content frameworks. I'm going to give you a high level overview of the 10 by 10 exercise, the six steps content framework by Jonah Berger, right? And then all the other things I'm going to show you later on today. And then to follow up on that, if I wanted to, right, I could go deeper into the six steps. I could give you templates and other frameworks and examples and case studies. That's another show right there. Then if I were to do another show about 10 by 10, I could give you more case studies, tutorials and things of that sort. I could even give you websites that I used to search for content, right? Some of you might be familiar with like the, the Google keyword planner. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And this is like the fun part. For those of you that absolutely love this, let me know. What's your 10 by 10 formula right now? What are you writing down? What are things that you're going to take with you? Because by the end of this episode, I want you to have an opportunity, an idea of what your content looks like. Now, there's some of you that might be like visual learners, and that's totally fine. I'm a visual learner. This is exactly why I have this iPad in front of me. And for those of you that are asking like what I'm using for the switcher, it's Stream Deck. So it's over here to my right. Makes me really helpful. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing is that if you're doing the 10 by 10, right? Let's say one side is going to be your FAQs. FAQs. And then you're just going to brainstorm that way. Okay. 
then you're going to have your should ask questions. Whatever works for you, whatever works for your client, help them brainstorm. When you're brainstorming content, it's not necessarily about like killing the butterfly and killing the idea of like, well, this is ranked this way and all that other stuff. It's just getting your thoughts out there, right? It's just getting your thoughts out there. And so once you have all of that, then you could go ahead and you could bucketize it right into beginner, intermediate and advanced. And when you're developing your show, then you'll know, okay, so this is the first episode in this whole entire series. Now, one thing that's actually been very interesting is I once had a student, right? I once had a student who was like, Stephanie, I just did this 10 by 10 exercise. And you know what? This is going to be my whole entire podcast series. Think about this. This is an opportunity to take your content, monetize it if you wanted to monetize it, turn it into blog posts, turn it into a guide, turn it into an ebook, all of the things. That's where it usually all starts. Okay? Shout out to Evan who is saying that FAQ versus SAQ is pretty dope. Yes. Yes. It gets your client or even just yourself just to open up your awareness of what are some questions that I should be aware of that I'm not currently aware of. Okay? The other thing that's really helpful to know is this, is that whenever we're developing content for our clients, let me share this with you real quick, is that we then create what's called this distribution strategy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I don't know how many of your social media people or folks, or maybe you have a virtual team, but this is generally what we do. We develop our pillar content, which we talked about earlier, right? Educate, inspire, entertain, whatever it is that you want to do, right? It could be different products or services as your content pillar right? Just always make sure that those content pillars, you're running it through the filter of the six steps. That's what's going to be super duper helpful. Okay. Then you have this, which is your distribution strategy. And this is generally what we do for lights, camera, live, as well as digital confetti is that we take that pillar content, right? We take that pillar content and then we repurpose it. We turn it into case studies, into blog posts, industry interviews, ebooks, maybe even like a LinkedIn Pulse article, because I don't know about you guys, but I get a ton of leads from LinkedIn. Okay. Then all of that, then all of that can be repurposed into social media. So think about your Facebook posts. Think about your Instagram, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, all of the things. Now, this is going to be the fun part. So for those of you, they're like, okay, great. Now I understand content pillars. Now I understand the 10 by 10. How do I space this out, right? How do I space this out? Because I don't want to be on social media just selling the entire time. I don't want to be on social media selling the entire time. So what else can I do, Stephanie? Do this. Again, write this down. (laughs) And it's called the ACES framework. ACEs framework. So the first one, and I learned this from a really good friend of mine, um, Dr. Lindsay Padilla. And so the first A is going to be authority. In your show, there are, there are times when you are showing your authority, your expertise, right? About a particular topic, your expertise. Okay. Next, is going to be connection. That's where you're going to share your story. That's where you're going to tell people about why you launched your show, how your business, your product or service changed lives to humanize your brand, right? So if I were to go ahead and put in here, humanize, that's what you're going to do. You're going to humanize. And then let's talk about the E engagement. I'm like in learning mode right now. I'm like teaching mode. (laughs) Let's talk about engagement. Engagement, these are things like, hey, what would be your favorite gift for the holidays? Or what is one, what is one live streaming gear that you can't live without? For me, it would be my stream deck, right? Because I'm like, I'm on four different shows. And so having a folder on Ecamm where I could put like all the things, that's money. (laughs) That's like, that's like life changing for me, right? So that's going to be your E engagement. This is where you want to spark conversations because for those of you that actually go live on Facebook, what was the change in the algorithm about two years ago? The change in the algorithm two years ago is that any business page that is posting content on social media, if it doesn't spark conversations, then it gets hidden. So that's why it's so important for you to have engagement. Okay. Then what's the S? What's the S? S is sizzle. 
again, shout out to Dr. Lindsay Padilla for putting this together because this is what I learned from her. It's the sizzle. This is now when you're saying, okay, now that I've established my authority, we've made a connection, you know a little bit more about who I am. I know a little bit about you because I've engaged with you. Now let me tell you about what business, product, or service I have to offer. That's where you're going to sell in the sizzle. Make sense so far? <laughs> yes. So Anthony is saying brilliant plan, a strategy, a vision, a structure for every video. Yes. So here's the fun part then. I always, I always tell this to everyone is that when you're creating content, you could always repurpose it, always repurpose it. And remember the word, what's our favorite word? Bucketize. You can bucketize your content. Okay. So here's what we're going to do next. This is literally what I have set up in Agora Pulse, which is my social media scheduling platform. I'm telling you, this is a crash course, right? Gab, this is a crash course. So this is what happens is that when I am repurposing my content, remember we talked about here's your pillar content and then it turns into like a blog post, whatever, whatever. And then it turns into your digital confetti. So it turns into like your smaller pieces. For my visual learners, <laughs> this is what happens. Then this is what you do with all of this. All of this then gets bucketized. <laughs> Hashtag bucketize. In Agora Pulse, I have these categories. And so I will have a social media post talking about, let's say in this, for this show, if I were to bucketize this into social media content, I would say like, hey, do you wanna learn three content frameworks so that way you could level up your creativity in 2020? Boom, here it is, that's one post. Hey, find out what people were absolutely in love with in yesterday's episode, boom, that's connection. Hey, what did you learn from today's episode? Boom, that's engage. Hey, if you love this, then go ahead and check out the book Contagious by Jonah Berger. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I've now taken the digital confetti and I've bucketized it into the ACES framework. Okay, I've put it into the ACES framework. And all of this, they're kind of like social media posts in um, Agora Pulse. Do you guys want to see how I actually set this up in Agora Pulse? Because I feel like I feel like you're gonna geek out as much as I am. So let me go ahead and um. Oh, you guys! <laughs> you guys. Okay, let me set this up for you. And then yes, Kathleen, thank you so much for jumping in. She's saying today's show is talking about content frameworks. Absolutely, we're talking about count content frameworks. <laughs> okay, let me move this over here because I have a ton of things going on in my background for you. But hold on real quick because I absolutely think that you are going to love this. Okay. All right. So let me switch screens and let's go over here. I was telling you, this is my this is my social media scheduling platform and it's called Agora Pulse. And notice that remember when I told you that there's authority, connection, engagement, sizzle, I have it all bucketized here. And the reason why it's so freaking cool, right? Let me, let me pop in here for you real quick. Boop. Where is it? Ha! Ah, there I am. Okay. The reason why this is so helpful is because I never have to worry about what to share on social media ever again, because now when I'm in Agora Pulse, here's what happens. Literally, this is a crash course when it comes to content marketing, okay? I now have these different categories. I have the ACES framework and I have the different time frames of when this content is going to go out, right? Of when this content is going to come out. That means I don't ever have to worry about what I'm gonna post on social media. If something horrific happens in the world, something devastating, I could always go in here and I can pause the content, but I never have to worry about what I'm posting on social media, okay? So notice how like Monday through Sunday, boom, I'm already good to go. I have every single thing that I'm going to talk about. Even when I am, let's say I'm participating, like leap into live streaming, right? I had my very own publishing queue that had all of the leap into live streaming and then it would automatically go out. Does that make sense? Are you guys following this? <laughs> Pastor Tim Walker is asking, what is the best social media management tool that you recommend 
Pastor Tim, honestly, I've been using Agora Pulse for probably like the last five or six years, like no joke. Um, this is where I have myself as well as my clients. And as you can see, you can see like literally the number of pieces of content that I have on here. If I were to show you one of my clients, <laughs> you would see that I have content that's like a hundred pieces in every single category of the ACES framework that I never even have to worry about. And so when I'm working with clients, this is what happens is that I could always go back to them and say like, okay, this is what we're posting on social media, right? This is how it aligns to our content pillars. This is how it satisfies the six steps, right? The social currency, the triggers, the emotions, the public value, the practical value, and the stories, right? the stories. And then I go in and I put it into that framework. <laughs> okay. So for those of you that have questions, Callie, I'm also going to be looking at Facebook Messenger. So if you want to kick those over to me, that's totally fine. Um, but I want to recap for you. Okay. So there looks like <laughs> the, the numbers went up. So I just want to make sure that like I'm sharing this with all of you. Let's recap. Okay. For those of you that are actually asking what I'm using for this right now, I use Procreate. And Procreate is my favorite drawing tool. Quick side note, these are all the different things that I love to do. I love to draw. I'm Like I said, I'm a visual learner. And so there's different things that I like to do. And so in today, what we've been talking about are the content frameworks. So if I were to summarize this, right, let's do a new one for you. We first talked about six steps. I want to make sure that you see this. Six steps. And you're going to read the book. Let's draw a book. <laughs> You're going to read the book by Jonah Berger, okay? Jonah Berger. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create your content pillars, right? So what are your content pillars? This is going to lay the foundation for your entire content strategy. What are the three things that you want to focus on? What are the three things that you that you want to focus on? And then think of like, what are some hashtags that you can use? What are some hashtags that you can use? What are some things that you already have stored in the vault? We're going to call this vault, right? What do you have that's already in the vault that you can repurpose and put in here? Okay. What are some things that you could already put in here? Good. All right. Then let's talk about like, now that I have these ideas, right? Let's brainstorm. Let's brainstorm. So let's do the 10 by 10 formula. Remember the 10, 10 by 10 is your top 10 frequently asked questions versus your should ask questions. If you guys are following along, literally this is like 20 blog posts that could be on your website. These are 20 videos that you could have on your YouTube channel. These are 20 live streams, 20 podcast episodes, right? Good. So you have your 10 by 10 and then what do we do? We bucketize them. We bucketize them and we're going to bucketize them into what? Into the ACES framework. <laughs> this is literally a masterclass. This is a masterclass in the making. And Luria, I think Luria had reached out to me on Monday. She's like, hey, do you want to hop on on Thursday? I was like, sure. She's like, what do you want to talk about? I was like, oh, let's talk about this. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I do this every year with clients, usually in October. Right, usually in October because I know what my marketing calendar is going to look like, right? And so what shifted in our business, right? COVID-19 happened. So what shifted in our business? What are some in-person trainings that we now have to take virtual, right? Things like that. <laughs> oh God, I love this comment. I'm going to bucketize everything. I bucketize everything. Let me tell you, I write things down on... Um, post-it notes and then I take the post-it note and then I move it like across the room. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. So this in a nutshell, like if you're a social media strategist, my strategist crew is going to love this. This is literally what I pre-frame all of my clients, right? This is what I pre-frame with my clients. It's that if we're going to develop content for you, right? I'm not going to post and ghost. I'm not just someone that's going to copy your press release and just post it on social media. I have to run it through this filter. I have to run it through the six steps. How do I make this captivating? How do I get this so that people want to share it? Do you guys want to share this episode? Right? Do you want to share this? I think so. I think so. Right? So what are the six steps? Then I say like, okay, this press release, does it actually fall within our content pillars? Hey, you know what? It's actually um, inspiring our audience of like, 
how we're going to go further. Where do we see Go Live Now going in 2021, right? It falls within our bucket. Then we could do a 10 by 10 and then an ACES framework. Now, the thing that I want to remind you for those of you that are just joining in is that this was the distribution strategy. Again, you're taking your pillar content and then you're going to break it apart. <laughs> you're going to break it apart and you're going to turn it into case studies, long form articles, even into eBooks. In fact, my last Lights Camera Live episode, my last Lights Camera Live episode was about how to take your live stream and turn it into a lead magnet. Let me say that again, how to take your live stream and turn it into a lead magnet. Because if you could take your, let's say this is like 35 minutes so far, you take this 35 minute video, put it into Descript, now you have it transcribed. Boom, make it an ebook, boom, sell it on your website, put it on Amazon, whatever it is that you need to do in order to build your show, so that way you could build your brand and your bottom line. Does that make sense, right? Does that make sense? I'm giving you a whole entire strategy of how Lights, Camera, Live and Digital Confetti how we run our business, okay? And it really stems from understanding when you're developing your content, your show, you have to think about like, okay, 12 months from now, what do I have to show? Is it views? Is it likes? Or is it the fact that I could bucketize this content and make revenue from it, right? Think about that, right? Loria, whenever we have like side conversations, we're always talking about know your value. And the one thing that I will tell you the one thing that I will tell you is this, know your value and add tax. Know your value and add tax. And when you have this, when you have this, it's gonna be very helpful for you. So you take your content, do all of this, create your distribution strategy, okay? All right, it is 10.36 so far in my time here in San Diego. And so I wanna answer your questions. I wanna answer your questions. What questions do you have about these content frameworks? Because we've talked about the six steps the six steps of contagious, why things catch on. We've talked about content pillars. We've talked about the 10 by 10 formula, which is frequently asked questions and should ask questions. We've talked about the ACES framework. I've also shown you how you can leverage Agora Pulse, right? To bucketize your content and create a publishing queue. In fact, let me, I think I actually have a website that I could share with you over here. And I'll put it on the screen. Callie, if you're still listening, I'm going to share this with the crew real quick. If you wanna check it out, Agora Pulse, I have a partnership with them, full transparency. Like I said, I've been using them, Pastor Tim, for like the last five, six years or so. But if you wanna sign up, just go over to agorapulse.com forward slash Stephanie and check it out. I'll answer any questions that you have, honestly. But every everything that I've shown you as far as how we come up with content, right? how we produce the content, how we repurpose the content, and how we monetize the content. This is literally like a 40 minute masterclass of everything, of everything that we've chatted about so far. All right, cool. So having said that, let me switch my screen. <laughs> Paula is saying, appreciate so much info in just 36 minutes, yes. It was one of those things, Paul, where people, you know, sometimes they post on social media and they're like, what can you talk about on the fly for 30 minutes? And I was like, I could seriously lay out my entire content strategy for you that I've been doing for clients for the last decade and a half. Okay. All right. So what other questions do you have? How can I help you? Because once this is done, this is done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You'll still be able to catch the replay because you know that go live now is definitely leveling it up. We're going to the next level when it comes to creating content. Okay. So here's Joe Hernandez. Joe Hernandez is saying our church already does live streams on Wednesdays and Sundays. How can we use this to help us get started engaging with more of our viewers? What's the first step? Okay. What's the first step? What's the first step that we could do for engaging our, our viewers, right? So what I would do is, again, I would still get familiar with the six steps, and then I would do the 10 by 10 formula. I would do the 10 by 10 formula, right? That was Joe. I would do the 10 by 10 formula. Oh, this is money. I didn't even tell you about this. Hold up. Let me let me write this down. Oh, I love these questions. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I would do. This is actually, when we did the Ecamm Live Leap Into Live Streaming Bootcamp, I was the keynote speaker. And what we did is I told you about the 10 by 10 formula. Joe Hernandez, this is what you can do. Once you come up with one through 10, right? This is where you want to get engagement from your audience. So remember the ACES framework? You're gonna go into the ACES framework. This is gonna be your E. You're gonna say, hey, Facebook group. 
newsletter, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever it is that you are, right? Of these topics, one through 10, which one are you most interested in? And the thing that I do with this, Joe Hernandez, is that I actually make it into a poll. And I'll say one through 10. Now this gets my Facebook group engaged because people will vote, right? Someone will be like, oh, I really love this topic. Now you've created what's called a micro commitment. I know I'm really, really brainy. <laughs> I know, I know I'm really, really brainy. Um, but now you know like, oh, okay, Anthony, it, like he totally loves this topic. So Anthony, this episode is for you. Or Joe Hernan, this is this episode is for you. You could you've now created this rapport. It's like digital dopamine, right? When they're like, oh, oh you're creating content for me? Yeah, because I've been struggling with this question for so, 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 so long. And here you are taking the time to answer that question. Okay. Let's see right here. Um do you find that a better structure? <laughs> Paula is saying, um, I noticed you share a ton of info and then at the end, ask for questions. Do you find that a better structure? Teach, teach, teach. And then, so here, here's the reason why I do that, Paul. So I'm kind of like, I'm not kind of like, I am. I am a brain nerd. So I actually studied co cognitive psychology back in my uni days. And what I know is that people learn in different ways. People learn in different ways. There are visual learners, which is why I was like, hey, let me bust out the iPad, right? There are auditory learners where I'm just like, okay, let me slow down and repeat that for you. Then there are kinesthetic learners where I have to give them an exercise and say, let's make sure that this actually makes sense to you. Go ahead and jot down one frequently asked question, right? In fact, for those of you that are kinesthetic learners, go ahead and tell me one frequently asked question that you get about your business, your product, or your service, okay? And so the reason, Paul, that I usually ask people, do you have any questions is because I want to lock in that learning because there are other people that learn by asking questions, right? Even if they're just paraphrasing or repeating what I just said, when I know that you're able to repeat back to me what six steps are, what the 10 by 10 is and so on, then I know that it, then I know that you're learning. Does that make sense? Then I know that you're learning and I know that I've done a good job as a teacher <laughs> in that sense. Okay. All right. So someone was just asking me about how to get their church viewers interested. Again, you could do the 10 by 10 formula, turn it into a poll, put it into your Facebook group, put it into your newsletter, all the things and all of that good stuff. Jennifer is saying, Oh, Jennifer. She says, how do I get my dog to stop? Dot, dot, dot. Yes. Jennifer, I actually just got a dog over the holidays and, um, I'm learning that I am now, <laughs> I'm learning different things. So Kaizen is saying that cognitive learning in different ways. Yes. In fact, actually, let me show you something else that's really geeky. Let me show you something else that's really geeky. And it might blow your mind. Something that I'm really interested in, and maybe this might be something that you want to do for your like resolutions for 2021. But my big thing, my big thing this year is what's called personal knowledge management. Let me write that down for you. Um, let me explain what that is. Actually, no, let me show you. Personal knowledge management. And for me, it's because I read a ton of books, right? And I want to lock in that learning. I want to create like my own Google of what's inside my brain, because if I can make connections from one idea to the other, then I could add my own value. I could add my own POV on top of it. And then it becomes my story, my POV, right? Encapsulated with my ideas. And so here's the thing. Check this out. I am in love. I am in love with this new platform called Rome Research. And look here. What I've done is that I've put in like all of the things that I love to learn, right? Kat says that she's tracking all of her learning in a knowledge hub. Kat, this is my knowledge hub. So notice how I have like all these different nodes, all these different topics that I'm interested in, and they're connected to one another. They're connected to one another. So for example, I just told, I just dropped like a new word on you. And I said, personal knowledge management. If someone asks me, Hey, Stephanie, what is personal knowledge management? Here's all of the information that I've collected about it, right? So if this is something that you're interested in, right? Check out Tiago Forte, Xiaomi, Ali Abdal. They're on 
they're on YouTube. These are there's cer- certain keywords that I'm interested in, right? Because person personal knowledge management is like building a second brain. I will tie this all back over into um into the content frameworks. But notice how like every single thing that I'm reading, look, I even have a shortcut here of all the books that I've read. Limitless, flow state, timeline therapy, virtual summits, all of that things, right? All of those things. These are like material that I read. So cat, cat, I read books on iBooks, Kindle and all of that stuff. And I always highlight books, right? For those of you that read books, I highlight them and then it stays in this app. And then I'm like, oh yeah, what book was that again? Well, it imports all of that into here. And then now I could connect all of those ideas together all of those ideas together. So how does this actually relate to the 10 by 10 formula? Well, right? Let's say I wanted to write an article about flow state. Mihai Chik sent me high. This is everything that I know about Mihai Chik sent me high and flow goal, how it relates to goal setting, how it relates to being in the zone. Now, as I'm taking my notes, when I need to create content, content for my show, a description, it doesn't take me a very long time. I don't I don't wrangle with words. I don't have copywriter block because I'm constantly putting this information in here. Does that make sense? Other things that I absolutely love, right? Neuroplasticity. The fact that we could change our mindset and we could connect different ideas and different neurons. And oh my God, I am a complete nerd, right? So all of this here, all of this here, if I wanted to do this, I could create a new, let's say 10 by 10, 10 by 10 um, live streaming. 10 by 10 live streaming. I could just go ahead and put in my 10 ideas here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Put it all in here and then connect the ideas. So now it's like, oh my God, I know I, sh- I should totally do this like a different, um, a different, uh, <laughs> I should totally do a show on Rome research, okay? But these are the ideas that I have. And so what I'm doing for 2021, and maybe you might want to join this, um, you know, join this with me is create your own personal knowledge management because I have everything that I've ever learned about every books, all of that other stuff. And it's here. And I could jump from one idea to the other. The difference between this. Oh, gosh. The difference between this is that here, let me. Let me do this for you real quick. I need, I have to draw this out for you because like I said, I'm a visual learner. For me, right, when it comes to live streaming, people will focus on the gear, but I'm all about, people want to focus on the gear, right? But I'm all about how to get the gears working up here. So everyone has like, in my mind, right? There are a lot of people that are talking about live stream, how to start a show and blah, blah, blah. What sets me apart in my mind is that I add the neuroscience to it the cognitive, the social media marketing to it. And that's how I differentiate myself, right? And so this is what's really, really helpful for me. And so for those of you that are using other like note-taking apps, right? Other note-taking apps. Um, I heard someone mention Notion or, or Hubs and all that other stuff. What I find about, because trust me, I've taken notes in like Evernote too, right? But like the way that my content, sorry, that's my chicken scratch. <laughs> Katie, chicken scratch um, in Evernote is that I have them like in folders, right? And then in those folders are subfolders. And then when a, within a subfolder is another subfolder, right? What I love, what I love about Rome is that I could have this idea and it sparks that idea. And then it sparks another idea. And then it goes here and it goes there. And then it's just this neural network. It's like my brain. It's my brain visually mapped out about what my values, beliefs, and attitudes are about content frameworks, about NLP, neuroplasticity. I know I just went totally, totally geeky on you, (laughs) but that's everything, right? That's everything. So for those of you that are just tuning in, we've been talking about content frameworks from like beginning to end. And this is why when Loria had reached out on Monday, she's like, Hey, PS, by the way, do you want to show up on the show on Thursday? What's something that you could talk about? I just went into Rome research. I was like, boom, I could talk about all of this. Oh, you want me to talk about flow state? Boom. I could talk about all of that. You want me to talk about me high cheek sent me high? Boom. I could talk about that. Right. Cause I have it all there and it's in my brain. The reason why I have Rome research is so that my brain, instead of trying to hold on of like a to-do list, right? If I put all of my knowledge into Rome research, then this brain can stay creative. 
it's not like, oh my gosh, I've used up all my energy today on taxes or expenses and all of that other stuff. It frees up so much space in between here, right? Because here's the thing is that our greatest wealth building asset is our mindset. And so when you're able to do this as personal <laughs> knowledge management, oh, it's so much fun. All right. So having said that, let's go ahead and review this real quick before I let you go. I know it's already that time. It's already that time. So content frameworks, if you are just jum jumping in right now, we're talking about six steps. When you're developing your content, understand why content gets shared. And it's usually the six steps by Jonah Berger. And so thank you so much, Callie and the rest of the crew for putting this all together. Then you're going to do your content pillars, right? This is your content pillars over here. I have something checked off. These are your content pillars. Go into the vault. Some of you probably have like old videos that you've recorded, especially if you use Ecamm, right? Because it's stored on an external hard drive. What's in the vault? What's in the vault that you could put into these content pillars and then expand upon it with a 10 by 10 formula. Okay. What are some frequently asked questions and should ask questions? And then your ACEs framework. Good. Yes. <laughs> oh, Cassandra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this has been so much fun. You guys, I know that Loria is out. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. I, I hope that you found a lot of value from this. If you are interested in learning more about Lights Camera Live, head on over to Lights Camera Live dot com right i actually have a show today at 2 p.m pacific time at facebook.com forward slash hey stephanie lou and we're going to be talking about how to build strategic relationships right because here's the thing there are resources in relationships it's not always about having the perfect landing page or having an seo optimized website it's about leveraging those relationships and so today we're going to be having um michaela underdahl from nimble to talk about how you could create a social crm to follow your audiences, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. It was just so much fun. I absolutely loved it. You guys are amazing. I'll have to go and find like all the comments everywhere, but again, if you ever wanna reach out to me, you could definitely find me on Facebook. Again, I'll be there today at 2 p.m. Pacific time. You guys are absolutely amazing. This was fun. Was this fun? I think this was a ton of fun. I think this was a ton of fun. So having said that, let me go. Let me say bye. Let's, buy, let's say bye to everyone because you guys are so cool and amazing. Thank you so much. That's right, Katie. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. On a whole nother level. You, you got a master class, that's for sure. I want to listen to this last song. So you can say what's up. Bye everyone!